There's no doubt our farmers are under attack. We haven't built a substantial dam in this country for decades. Properties are being vandalised with giant transmission towers to connect wind and solar to the grid. The big input costs for farmers, energy, diesel, fertiliser and more, well, they keep going up. In fact, Australia now imports most of its fertiliser because our gas prices, which is absolutely needed to make fertiliser, they're too high. Basic infrastructure, if you know anyone who lives in the regions, it's degrading. The good news, though, our farmers are standing up for themselves. Well, Oregon farmers always have, but now the NFF, the National Farmers Federation, is backing them up, announcing a new campaign called Keep Farmers Farming. And its main target is the Albanese government. Joining me now for the latest on this and more, Graham Lloyd from The Australian. What is this? I'm filled with a bit of hope here, but what's this new campaign, Graham, mm. all about? Well, good evening, Peter. It's a significant development. I think uh, the National Farmers Federation, like a lot of industry bodies, has been happy to walk along with government over recent years on the net zero approach. Uh, and suddenly they've lifted their head and discovered that they've really lost touch with their membership. Uh, live sheep exports are being banned. There's all sorts of other issues with industrial relations, the net zero transition with transmission lines and other things. Uh, that their members are unhappy and uh, the NFF has decided, well, it's going to go in and fight for them. Uh, and this really, when you look at what's happening with the mining uh, lobby groups as well, uh, this is a big pushback to uh, government agenda. I, I honestly think it could be a game changer because what has turned the debate about renewables, I mean, no one believes that they're cheap and all the stuff the governments have said, and we'll get to that in a moment in relation to Victoria, but what's turned, I think, people's attention from these, um, these green promises to the practical reality is seeing the rollout of these towers right across prime agricultural land and communities not being properly consulted. On that score, the former head of AGL, and he's a power industry veteran, Michael Fraser, has said today, well, we need a reality check on these net zero targets. He says we're way behind schedule. He said we're headed to a return of the 1970s when state-backed power networks had all of those chronic blackouts. I mean, I grew up in the bush and I had a candle beside my bed as a kid. And he says, mm. if this happens, public support for the transition will be lost overnight. I reckon he's on shaky ground as it is, but uh, Chris Bowen, he says it's all going full steam ahead. Well, that's right. Look, the uh, former AGL boss has joined a raft of industry specialists now to say this uh, renewable energy transition is way off track. Uh, and it's not just a matter of not meeting the targets. Um, it's a matter of not having the uh, resources in place when uh, coal is retired from the system. And uh, public support for this transition is going to vanish very, very quickly uh, when that happens. Um, I think there's a lot of survey material that shows that uh, support for net zero is wide, but it's not very deep. And I think uh, the government needs to draw some lessons from the, the voice referendum on this, the, the disconnect between the elites, if you like, and, and the great public at large. Uh, and it's that great public at large mm. that is bearing the cost and is just going to desert the field uh, if things go badly wrong. The Chamber of Commerce and Industry in WA, they've come out to say that there's a real concern about critical minerals. We all know we need them, the key to defence technologies, but they're saying that moves by the Albanese government to reshape environmental protection laws could put mining of these minerals at risk. Yeah, this is another area where the government's working against itself. Uh, Anthony Albanese has been in the United States and he's saying, look, there's more billions to uh, promote the, uh, the mining and development of these rare earths and minerals. Uh, but on the other hand, the sort of bureaucratic procedures to actually doing anything in the country now, particularly when it comes to uh, mining and farming, are getting so difficult um, that uh, it doesn't matter how much you spend to encourage people to do it. If you can't get the permits mm. through the process, it's just not going to happen. Hey, in Victoria, they're pushing on with this ban on uh, gas. They want every home to be electrified. I tell you, anyone who comes today and takes away my gas hot plate, 
there'll be hell to play over my dead body. But the, the comments today from the uh, minister there, the Energy Environment Minister, Lily D'Ambrosio, I mean, she honestly is taking the mickey. Have a listen to this. We know that that is good not just for the environment and emissions, but it's absolutely good from day one uh, for reducing people's energy bills and significantly. And the SEC is going to play a really important trusted role in providing support and advice to Victorian consumers. They use the SEC brand because it harks back to the 20 or 30 years ago when the SEC kept the lights on. It's nothing like that now. It's a front for a renewable entity, really. But this idea that renewables bring down power prices, show me where that's ever happened. Because all we can see as Australians is our bills going up and up and up. That, that's right, Peter. And the, the thing is that the more you encourage people to use electricity when you're not able to supply the amounts that are required, the price is only going to ever keep going up. And a lot of these calculations about how much can be saved uh, in the uh, transition in Victoria are just crazy and they rely on everybody buying an electric vehicle uh, which will make up the savings but they don't really take account of the cost of buying these technology in the first place. This really is, it's an ideological crusade and uh, the Green groups are falling right in behind and, and they're sending messages to me today saying what we need to do is rip up all the gas pipelines to make sure we can never backslide.